Hey there viewers and welcome back to the South Main Auto Channel. Sitting inside the 2019 Buick Encore. It's got the big one for turbo. Uh, fuel gauge doesn't work or it works intermittently I should say. The customer states that uh, it works and then you'll be driving along and it drops down to empty and then back to you know presumably where it should be. But he's not even sure about that at this point he thinks the vehicle has about a half a tank of fuel in it so about seven gallons he was claiming um because i told him between the time that he made his appointment and now to you know you know go ahead and fill it up full and then you know drive it keep track of his mileage and then you know that way there he knows how much fuel's in it and he, he thinks it should be around a half a tank uh he didn't mention anything about the money light being on but i do see the engine light is on which I guess could all be related so I did a little poking on the World Wide Web looked in service data because I wanted to kind of see how this sending unit system works I'll give you the general in a nutshell view it's your classic double humper tank I believe this car is all-wheel drive so the drive shaft runs down the middle so there's two two reservoirs if you will two of these babies uh one on each side therefore it has to have two sending units so it has a fuel pump in one side of the tank and then it has a fuel pickup and a level sensor in the other side so uh two level sensors one on each side basically one on the fuel pump and then one on the uh, suction side it uses like a most of these use like a venturi effect to draw fuel from from the other side uh then that signal goes to the engine computer then the engine computer broadcasts it on the network and then it ends up at the cluster. It did state in service data that if there is an issue with the uh, fuel level sensor, sensors, uh, one or the other, that the fuel gauge would default to empty. So uh, I guess that's better than defaulting to full because nobody wants to be driving along thinking their gas tank's full. And that's all, I, that's all I've read. I didn't read anything beyond that. What I was looking for, because I suspect that there is, you know, a fuel level sensor issue. So what I was looking for in service data is to see if we could find the resistance value of these level sensors. That way, you know, we could, you know, make a measurement or we could substitute uh, something like that. I'm curious if we can plug in a scan tool, obviously get the code if that relates to this issue, uh, track that down. Uh, perhaps that's where we can get our values. Oftentimes it's hidden within that portion of service data. And then um, if that code has nothing to do with it and it's your classic 299 turbo underboost code that this car is inevitably going to have, uh, we'll, we'll keep on keeping on. Um, the other thing I was going to say is I wonder in service data being that both level centers go to the ECM uh, what appeared to be on independent wires, can we read the value of both of those? That way we know which side we're having an issue with. So uh, that's where I'm at. That's how my brain's working. That's what I'm thinking about. So let's grab a scan tool and see what we see. Let's have a little gander at our fault report. And let's see. Oh boy. I'll tell you what's going on with this thing right now. Uh, fuel pressure sensor high voltage, fuel level sensor circuit high voltage, fuel level sensor circuit two high voltage. And then front video display output signal. Well, I'm not gonna jump the gun here. I'm wondering if we got some rodent damage. There's gotta be a connector here. Um, I tell you what, so high voltage, we either the wires are cut, completely open circuited, or the ground is missing. I would be curious. Well, let's do this. We don't care about what it says. Yes, we do. We do care a little bit about um, what some things here. Let's go into, uh, we're just gonna pick one. We don't care which engine. It does have start, stop. We're going to go into uh, data stream here and let's look at the fuel pressure sensor see if it is at five volts uh see if it indeed is hi let's see okay our five volt references are good we want fuel tank pressure fuel tank pressure 4.9 or oh that's fuel level sensor 4.9 or fuel level sensor left and right both at 4.9 or 
fuel tank pressure at 4.9er. What that tell you folks? That's telling you we either have an open circuit because they are high um, or you know we're, we're missing a ground. So let's see do they share do they share the same ground? Let's see how can we get what's the menu button do? Oh there we go. Let's go look up in service data. Now this is Harbor Freight's service data. Um, oh, let me sign into my Harbor Freight account here. Hey, look, it says I'm successful. Uh, we're going to click Always Show because I think that takes us to our site. I think it puts in your vehicle info, and that's where I'd be wrong. So let's just select it real quick, see if we can find this. 2019, it's the Buick. Encore. Uh, I don't know how to use their service data. Procedures, oh wow. Wearing diagrams, service bulletins. Let's do this. I'm a big search engine guy. We're going to type fuel tank pressure. If we fix one of these items, we're going to fix them all, I guarantee it. Either that or this guy's got real bad luck. Uh, we don't want, we want diagrams. Okay, inline harness. Vehicle underbody. Let me poke here. Let me set you down, folks. Service data isn't as intuitive as other service data platforms. So... I did a little poke in here. So here's the fuel pump and level assembly, but they only show, I'm only finding the one, which is weird. And that says it's going to the chassis control module, which when I was reading like on Mitchell earlier was stating that the fuel level sensor went straight to, um, you know, the engine controller. So I'm gonna to have to do a little more digging on this, but before we get too excited, because we suspect possibly rodent damage connector issue, um, if these diagrams are correct, oh, wait a minute, see, so this diagram doesn't show the level sensor. Ah, I jumped the gun, because this is only power and ground. Look at this, so yeah, it's duty cycle control pump. Okay, so this does not show the level sensor, because we were Googling fuel tank pressure sensor. Okay, so we, we could still be right. This guy's jumping the gun here. Fuel tank pressure sensor goes in this connector X350 and it gets its ground from the engine control module. Um, okay, let me find the, uh, the fuel level sensor. So that's the fuel tank pressure. So yes, I should have thought of this. They, they cannot share the same ground. Don't be an idiot, Eric because these are gonna get a low reference from the engine computer, which it does. Okay, I tell you what, let me just, let me, let me see if we can find uh, X350, because if we find that everything goes into that, then, then we're gonna be good. Uh, you, like I said, I'm a little fumbly on the uh, Harbor Freight's uh, version of service data here. I, th I, think, I think it's Motor who makes it. Um, location diagram let's just click on one of these let's go to x350 but this is the service data that comes with the scan tool and it's OEM data so this is this is OEM GM like if you were paying for GM okay oh what do you know fuel level sensor signal primary secondary oh what say what where's this thing live where does it live I probably have to click on something different to figure that out. Uh, let's see. Let me see if I can find out where it lives. It's probably underneath the vehicle and it's probably chewed up. See, you get the pointer, so you just hang on to that and use your finger. We're getting closer. All right, outside of the patch compartment behind right rear well for the center line of the spindle under the plastic splash shield. That is crazy specific. 
Thank you, General Motors. Chevrolet, Chevrolet, we're driving a Buick. That's super specific. I bet she's crusty. Girl, you crusty. X350, is this thing not loading? Oh, there it is. Ta -da. X350, numero uno. Enhance. 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 That's as far as she goes. So, there's our connector. Let's get it up in the air and see if we can win this war with a visual inspection, which I'm assuming that we can. We'll do a bunch of back clicking, some Xing. I don't know how you get out of this. Boom. Boom. All right. Back to diagnostics. Here we go. Let's rock and roll, boys. So I'll take just a minute and comment on uh, the Harbor Freight or the Icon T10, wherever you want to call it. Like I say, it is a launch-based scan tool. It appears to use Motor Motor uh, as the brand of their service state. Now I've used it in the past because it's also on uh, Altel also also uses motor. I have never found it to be very intuitive but I don't use it every day either so I can usually find what I'm looking for in there and it's the same thing like anytime I've used Moto Logic um, which is the stuff like Advanced Auto Sales or Car Quest. I find it real fumbly but that's because I'm used to Mitchell on the man, I'm used to Identifix, and I'm used to some OEM service data that we subscribe to. So all the info is there. It's just you gotta find it, and it takes a little bit of poking around, but I assume if I used it every day, I would be much more fluent. And we can get her get her rolling pretty good, but either way it's there, and it's pretty nice to see that they don't use stupid colored wiring diagrams. Um, colored wiring diagrams are nice, don't get me wrong but they're rewritten, they oftentimes, many, many times contain errors, which can be very frustrating. So, but you guys know rule number one, never trust service data, rule number 1.1, never trust color and wire diagrams, rule number two, never ever trust your scan tool. And there's more rules, but those are the main ones we use. Your oil spray. Yeah, bravo to this guy. Nice. There's our X. X350. Wires go up on top of the tank. Mm hmm. Wow. You must take it to Crown. Local place here. Uh, Goodrich Auto Works at Bath. We'll give them a shameless promotion. They do a great job with the crown. If anybody's looking for a crown, they do not skimp. Usually, I have several customers that take their cars there. And, uh, well, actually, that's where I send them. And they do a great job. And I send them there because that shop does a great job with the crown. They don't miss nothing. Uh, let's see here. I'm gonna sit you guys down and look. See if I can't see up on top of the tank because I don't see anything jumping right out at us. Let's give me some Blair Witch style video action here. Let me sit you down. So I looked and I cannot see anything obvious. I can see on top of the tank pretty decent when up there with a the mirror. You could see the harness go back on both sides, but didn't see any, you know, didn't see any mouse nest or anything like that. I'm a little apprehensive to pull this apart, but we have to because I gotta see, we gotta make our test at that connector regardless if it's green there or not, we have to have a starting place because this thing could be something wonky between you know, point A and point B, but this is gonna be our easiest access point. So let's start here. Usually cars that are crowned, fluid film, uh, surface shielded, whatever you wanna call it, oil sprayed, we'll use generic term. You usually don't see rodent damage stuff underneath it. I don't think the mice like this stuff. Took that little plastic nut off. They have the big reveal. Here's our connector. I didn't want to do anything without you guys seeing. I don't feel like taking the whole fender liner out. Let's, um, let's worry a little bit here. 
and everything's pretty oily. Oil, 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 oil. Let's get a little something, a little doodad to flick up our red clip, get it unplugged. Maybe we'll see some green, maybe we won't. Kind of hoping for an easy one here. Whoops. Oh, it didn't even break. <laughs> even better. <laughs> Take back my whoops and be like, I meant to do that. Be green, be green. No green. God dang it. I'll start tearing apart the inside of the freaking car. Darn, 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 darn. It did feel like it was connected all the way. Well, let's just be sure. Plug it back up. Let's cut the key on. See if our sensors are still stuck at five volts. We'll probably have to print us out a diagram. Dang it. I hate working hard. Um, and then what we'll do find out what wires what see where they go next we'll make our tests here and uh i find it really hard to believe that three sensors went bad that's <laughs> such some dealership move right there you need all three sensors <laughs> we unplugged it we plugged it back in I set the vehicle down, cut the key on, then I went to lunch. But when I turned the key on, I noticed that the fuel gauge, you know, bing, 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 the dinger went off, fuel level low. So lunch is over, I came back out, raised the car up, made sure the key was still on, loaded up the scan tool, and look at that. I don't know if you guys can see or not. Hopefully you can. Everything's working. Now our fuel level sensor left and right are about three and a half volts. Fuel tank pressure is at three volts. Unless GM has done something different, that's wrong. Atmospheric pressure on a General Motors is typically one and a half volts. I just noticed that. So these are all at three and a half. Fuel level sensor, left, right. I assume this is just the average. We could do the math. No, it's not. That one is going with this one. Okay. What I wanna know, I don't have a way to show you guys this. I'm just kind of curious. Oh, hello. Let's see here. Oh, things are happening now, boys. We just wiggled there. Look at that, 4.98, we're back open circuited. There's something going on here. Not here, but mostly here. Stand by. I had to go help Joshy there for a minute. We're going to graph three of these items. So I just, I just select them, pull them up into a graph. And I, I'm just, I'm kind of curious. If it's in of course, now it's just right at five volts. Oh, there we go, okay. So this is interesting. So there's, there's that. I've got my hand just going around the connector and I'm gonna, I'm gonna squeeze it like that. I was making a liar out of me. So I'm just squeezing the connector there. Hopefully you guys can see what's happening. I'm gonna let go of the connector. I just let go of it. Whoa. Squeeze it again. I can't tell what's happening, but hopefully it's doing what it's doing. I'm squeezing it, just squeezing it there in my right hand. I'm gonna let go of it. Is that what it's doing? Okay. So that's curious. Also, when I'm squeezing it, I'm also, you know, it's bending the wires down here. So let me try to isolate where this issue is coming from. Wiggle on the wires on the bottom, nothing's happening. I'm wiggling them on top and nothing's happening. You know, I'm curious about the fuel tank pressure sensor, though, going to three volts. Uh, perhaps what we should have on our screen here is 
Ah, sugar. I think the key must have shut. Nope, the key's still on. Um, I think what we need is uh, how it interprets that voltage, uh, you know, in inches of merc inches of water. So let me uh, let me get some data pits here. Uh, yes, they have it in inches of water. And uh, we'll just do fuel tank pressure sensor. It's curious though that we're dropping three sensors that don't utilize the same ground. Um, let me get us a custom data list. Okay, so there's our fuel tank pressure sensor at minus uh, 7.7. .7. I want to give it a squeeze to see if 3 volts indeed is zero. It is not. So there's still a problem. So whatever we're, whatever we're doing here, so 3 volts is still minus 7 inches of water. So there, there is still an issue. But what in the world is going on here when I'm squeezing It definitely has nothing to do with the harness there. Okay, got a little something going on there. All right, so something going on when I'm wiggling here. Not at, not as much. I'm gonna hold the connector dead still. All right, something going on with these bottom wires. I'm gonna open this up a little bit. I just highly doubt, oops, you guys are kinda of out of frame there. I just highly doubt in, you know, something in that connector itself. I can feel the Schlitt right around this area here. I mean, the connector looked good and clean. I don't usually see issues in GM connectors. This harness, though, is quite vulnerable where it's at. Of course, we can't tell if any of this tape has been fiddled with because of the oil spray and the dirt collection that's on it. I just want to kind of keep an eye on my scan tool here. Let's open this up, see if we see anything. We need to probably isolate the exact circuit that's having problems here. Oh, <laughs> what do we got here, boys? Oh, there's your money shot, old son. It's this guy. Black with green. <laughs> straight out of the connector. I think everybody else is feeling stout. Black with greeny. What are you gonna be? Black with greeny. When I pulled up our X350 harness pin out here. So that's, I printed this right from the scan tool right to my printer. Oh, we can look up pin numbers. We're going to cheat. Black with green, survey says, fuel level sensor low reference. Okay. That is pin letter M. And looking at this one here, A through H. Uh, a being gray, H being blank, I imagine. Yep, F through L is blank. H falls in that category somewhere. It's blue with white is E, so that's A, B, C, D, E. And then we come around here, J, or it should be S, if you will. It should be black with green also. Let me just see here. I'm just trying to figure out. S is black with green, yes. And blue. And that should be right next to that one there. So there's our empty cavity. Yes, that is pin M. So J K L L M N O. 
elemental is not on here, but this is M that goes in that hole there. Why, if that is fuel level sensor low reference, why would that screw up our fuel tank pressure sensor? Fuel level sensor, yeah, I get it, I'm with you. Secondary fuel level sensor, primary fuel level sensor, do they utilize the same ground for the fuel level sensor? The answer to that is yes, at least according to this. Fuel level sensor low reference, there's only one of. However, there is two signal wires. So that would make sense that they utilize the same low reference. Now, fuel tank pressure, we have fuel tank pressure five volts. We have fuel tank pressure sensor signal. Do we have a fuel tank pressure low reference? Fuel pump low reference, fuel pump shield, vent control, fuel level low reference. Why is there no fuel pressure sensor low reference? That would be the only way that all three of these sensors could be screwed up at the same time. We're gonna do a quick bypass test without, that's, that's why this thing sent me on a bit of a witch hunt. I'm gonna pull up a diagram again of those three sensors and see if they utilize the same signal return. I thought that we had looked at that earlier, but my memory is not that good. So we strip that back. We're gonna bring it around town. We're gonna to plug it into the back side of this connector. Okay. We're gonna to have to look up to see they don't list. Oh, here we go, terminating lead. Because this is what this is the beauty of GM service info. Connector ID type, one through IV, which is four. Diagnostic probe, removal tool, terminating lead. This is a terminal ID numero uno for our Roman viewers. And Roman numero one oh, terminating lead number 1357630 is what we'll need to fix this little fella. Okay, let's bypass it and see if it takes care of all of our issues. We're gonna utilize some wires out of our AES Wave U-Test kit. We didn't need to strip that back, some Pomono probes. Give that a stab. Terminal M. Back probe on the good side. <laughs> Who's fixed? This guy is. Just like that. 1.5 volts on the fuel tank pressure sensor, which we'd expect. We're at atmospheric pressure and our gas gauge should work. So. A, we learned a couple things. A, the customer wasn't lying because he says even when it was working, it really didn't think it was working. And, uh, and that's what he told us and that's the truth. And I believed him. A, because he's a pastor. And B, he had no reason to lie to me. Usually with customers, it's say less, pay less. But this guy says, if you lie, you fry. I <laughs> get it? And it's made that up. He doesn't say that, but I'm sure he believes it, as he should. Um, so that's it. Curiosity has got the best of me. I need to know if these sensors all share the same ground, which we don't even need to know anymore because uh, we just proved that they do. All three sensors, including the fuel tank pressure sensor, utilize the same low reference wire. I need to see it with my own peeper, so I'm gonna look it up. We were here earlier and this is why we didn't believe that there was any connection. So we have fuel tank pressure sensor, the ground wire, green or black with green, pin M, connector X350, true. We know that's true. We've seen it here. Uh, and then that comes up to X112, goes to the end controller. Chicky check. Okay, that's fuel tank pressure sensor. Now we want to look up fuel level oops see if we can still catch it sensor or okay 
Go to diagrams, go to wiring diagram, Buick with the love. Oh, great, now I gotta try to find it here. Stand by. And I think this is why we should have looked further in service data because we would have seen fuel level, fuel pump level sensor assembly, fuel level sensor secondary, fuel tank pressure, black and green, black and green, black and green, goes to a junction, Ghost X350 pin M, comes down to the 112, ends up at the K20 engine controller. This splice, the junction 407, therefore has to be on top of the fuel tank. I'll be dipped. Way to save some money, General Motors. And the only one receiving its 5 volt reference is the fuel tank pressure sensor, X350 pin C, pin C, 5 volt reference. That's how you do it, boys. We're done. We're gonna leave this one at that, folks. I'm gonna order the pigtail to get this fixed. Uh, not gonna bore you with that. It's just replacing uh, that connector or that you know wire lead, which you know we have in the service data on that piece of paper I crinkled up that I showed you. And that's it. The Harbor Freight T10 Icon came through for us. Uh, not really to toot their horn, but we utilize their service data. Uh, True Fix, I think they call it. It's through Motor or Solera. Solera is who has Identifix. I can't keep all the companies straight, but it had everything on there uh, that we needed, even though I fumbled with it a little. We're able to, uh, you know, get heads or tails out of this, and then ultimately figure it out in the end. So. Uh, you know, I don't know if anybody's on the fence about, you know, purchasing one of these, but that's that. So we'll try to use it some more. Still big Alltel guy. I love my Alltel. Uh, not going to lie. Just because it's something I'm super used to and I can poke around way quicker. Um, and that's it. So we're going to keep on keeping on. Kind of a dumb one. We knew what was going on before we got there. Then we told ourselves that can't be it. But here we are. And I don't want you making an excuse to not leave a comment. Question, concern, look us up on Insty, Facebook. We don't post a lot there, but hey, whatever. We're there. And uh, just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.